Over the next few days, Winnie was focused on writing the song. Sometimes when Jeffrey walked past the music classroom, he would see her playing the guitar alone in the studio. Once when he walked by, Winnie stopped him and asked, Do you want to hear the song? Do you want me to give you advice? Jeffrey asked. He proudly walked and pulled up a chair to sit opposite her. He sat with his legs crossed. Play then. Winnie closed her eyes and ignored how arrogant he looked. She started playing the guitar. A ray of sunlight fell on her hair as she peacefully sang the song. Her head was lowered and her face was pale and pretty. Her lashes turned golden as they caught the sun's rays. Her lips were moving gracefully as she sang the song with her beautiful voice. The autumn breeze was refreshing. A fallen leaf drifted into the window and fell onto her hair. Her fingers were slender, snow white. She wasn't wearing any accessories, yet those hands were still pretty. Jeffrey gazed at her. His eyes sparkled. On such an afternoon, hearing her singing, while sunlight poured on the floor, Jeffrey felt that his serene heart was plucked along with the strings. It was peaceful and beautiful. Sadly, the second half of the song was incomplete. Winnie couldn't finish the music but raised her head and said to him, I haven't composed the rest of the song yet. Her cheeks were slightly red. Do you need to compose the music too? Jeffrey knocked his lap with his slender fingers while asking the question. He didn't hear Sean mention that. He shouldn't be so hard on the singers. No, I tried to compose the music since I've written the lyrics, said Winnie with a soft voice. Even if Director Woods doesn't pick me, I can make some small changes and make it a new song of mine. You compose the music all alone. Jeffrey was surprised. He had no experience in the music industry yet, but he knew that composing a song was not easy. Many young singers didn't know how to compose these days. Most of them had teams doing it for them. She created such a beautiful song all by herself, meaning that she was talented indeed. It also meant that as a singer, she was outstanding in many ways. Yeah, Winnie nodded. My team makes good music, but I prefer to do it myself. Do you think Sean Woods will like it? How am I supposed to know? I'm not him, Jeffrey said. Then he noticed the disappointment in her eyes. But he slightly moved his delicate thin lips and continued. I think some parts of this song are a little too high pitched. In fact, you don't need to emphasize the treble. It's not what touches people. What's more important is that you want your music to resonate among other people, don't you? I've heard your songs. It's a little hard for some other people to sing those songs. If you made them a little easier to sing, more people will want to sing your songs in karaoke clubs when the movie becomes popular. That will be a new source of income and it'll also help to build your fame. Winnie paused briefly, pondering over his words. He seemed to be right. Earlier, her team had talked to her about that too. Which part do you think needs to be lower? Jeffrey walked to her side and bent over to look at her notebook. He pointed at one line of the lyrics and said, Here. You have such a good memory. I just played it for you, yet you've already memorized it. When he responded with surprise, Jeffrey was happy to be complimented by her. People always complimented him, and he normally ignored the compliments. However, it felt nice when those words came out of her mouth. I'm a director. I surely have a good memory. Check the lower pitch version then. Winnie picked up the guitar. Jeffrey closed his eyes to feel the music carefully. It doesn't need to go that low. Winnie adjusted the music again. He was listening while she was trying to perfect the music. More and more classmates walked past the room as class was about to begin. It's about time for class. When he put the guitar down and stood up. Eh. Jeffrey glanced at the leaf which was lying on her hair the whole time. Abruptly, he reached a hand toward her hair. What's wrong? When he raised her head and saw the boy's velvet-like soft hair and eyelashes in the sunlight. His dark eyes sparkled like stars. She could even see her reflection in his eyes. Jeffrey slightly turned and looked straight into her shining eyes. His heart fluttered. Jeffrey's mind blanked for a split second. Winnie was distracted as well until voices of their classmates could be heard in the corridor. I have to go to class, Jeffrey said as he regained his senses. He kept the leaf in his pocket as he turned to leave the room. When he opened the door, Ella was standing there with a blank face. She looked over at Winnie, who was putting her guitar away. 
Jeffrey frowned and walked around her without stopping. Wait, Jeffrey! Ella ran after him. Do you like Winnie? I'm just talking to her regarding music. Jeffrey stopped in his tracks and turned coldly to look at her. It's not your business who I like anyway. I already made things clear to you. I've never seen you so patient with any other girl. Ella said, recalling what she saw through the window just now. Is it really because she's April's friend? Why are you so bothersome? Jeffrey's temples were throbbing. Luckily, he didn't accept her feelings. She was so controlling even though they weren't a couple. I, I... Ella was on the brink of tears. I just care too much about you. There are many women who care about me, Jeffrey angrily said. Do I have to concern myself with everyone's feelings whenever I interact with someone? Can I have a friend of the opposite gender? It's none of your business who I date anyway. You should really learn from your sister. How could you be so different even though you're siblings? Don't go spouting nonsense in front of Winnie. Ella bit her lip hard as she watched him stalk away. She only turned to leave when Jeffrey was out of her sight. She bumped into Winnie, who was just leaving the music room. Ella! Winnie felt uncomfortable when she saw Ella glaring at her with hatred. Was there another misunderstanding? Winnie, I dare to admit that I like Jeffrey. But what about you? Is it so difficult to admit it? Ella asked through gritted teeth. You're already so popular. Why do you have to come after my Jeffrey? Winnie was good-tempered, but she was annoyed at Ella. If you're going to have this kind of attitude, I don't think you will ever win his heart. In fact, you're going to push him further away. Don't blame others for your own failure. She turned to leave. She wrongly assumed that Ella was dating Jeffrey, and she felt bad for that. But she had never misspoken about her, ever. Ella, on the other hand, was always quick to attack her and jump to conclusions. She now sympathized with Jeffrey. She thought that they could at least get to know one another, but this girl was just plain petty and jealous. At 4 p.m., there was a seminar discussion for the performance faculty. They were divided into four groups for discussion. Jeffrey was lazily leaning on his chair. His feet were on the table and his eyes closed. He wasn't participating in the discussion. He didn't look interested one bit. Austin nudged him and said, Hey, you should at least show that you're participating. We have to write a report on this later. This is a piece of cake for me, Jeffrey said and turned away. Austin was momentarily speechless. He finally said, Give me your phone. I want to show everyone the clip that you showed me last time. Take it yourself, Jeffrey said. Austin reached into his pocket. A dried leaf fell out of the pocket. Dude, what are you doing with a leaf in your pocket? He asked. Jeffrey turned and gave the leaf a careless glance. Yeah, why was there a leaf in his trousers' pockets? He spent a few seconds thinking, then recalled that he took the leaf from Winnie's hair back in the music studio. He didn't want to throw it on the floor then, so he put it into his pocket. Just throw it away. Austin threw it on the floor. Jeffrey automatically sprung up and swiftly caught the leaf in the air. His agile movement shocked Austin. What are you doing? It's only a leaf. It's not a gift from a pretty girl, is it? Is it from Winnie? Another classmate laughed and jokingly said, I heard that you were with her in the music studio at noon. Many people saw you guys. You're overthinking. I just don't want to throw it on the floor. It's going to the trash can. Jeffrey sat back down and said with a bland face, Nothing's going on between me and Winnie. Don't gossip around. After all, she's a public figure. If the rumor spread, it would be bad for her. No way. She's so pretty. Are you saying that you have no feelings for her at all? Austin tittered. If I can spend some time alone with her, I'd be so excited that I might stay up the whole night. Is she so pretty? I don't think so, said Jeffrey. My sister's pretty, and so is my mom. I look at them every day, so I'm immune to pretty ladies. That's true. You'll become insensitive to pretty people if your family's all so pretty, said Austin with jealousy. So what is going on between you and Winnie? She asked me for help. Jeffrey answered the question, because I have great musical talents. Ooh, Austin pretended to throw up, then said, That's enough. When have you become so disgustingly narcissistic? Jeffrey thought for a moment, then replied, I learned it from my brother-in-law. He would have never said something like that before. He was probably influenced by Aaron. After all, they had a meal together last weekend. Aren't you going to do the discussion yet? Jeffrey said, reminding the others. 
The class will end in 10 minutes. Hearing that, the boys instantly started the discussion without saying another word to him. Jeffrey lowered his head and looked at the camphor leaf in his hand. It was yellowing. He put it under his nose to sense a nice aroma from it. His heart flipped a little. At last, he put the leaf in his book. During the next few days, Winnie adjusted the song a few times. On Tuesday night, she finalized it. On Wednesday morning after breakfast, she put the music papers into her bag, put on some light makeup, and prepared to leave. As she opened the door, she saw the door next to hers was opened as well. Jeffrey walked out in a deep blue suit matched with a white shirt. He looked like someone who was going to a fashion show. Don't you have class today? Winnie paused briefly. He was casual most of the time, so today... She felt a little strange seeing him so formal. His cold face gave out a strong vibe. Um, for the next couple weeks, I'm going to do some practice on the film side. Jeffrey nodded and said, The crew needs me today. Are you going to see Sean? Yeah. Winnie was a little worried. Do you think I can make it? Jeffrey said four simple words. Leave it to fate. Winnie's mouth twitched slightly. No one would encourage people with those words. Thank you for your help anyway, she said. Since you want to thank me, buy me an expensive meal if he picks you. Jeffrey smiled. Sure. Winnie nodded. Anything that could be solved with food would not be a problem. They took the elevator together. Jeffrey went straight to the parking lot to get a sports car while Winnie got into her nanny van, heading to the audition site. Apart from the singers, some actors and actresses would also be there for the audition. When they arrived at the auditioning company, Winnie was stunned when she saw all the artists in line waiting with their manager. She knew that Sean's work was gaining a lot of attention, but she didn't expect such a huge turnout for the audition. There were plenty of famous actors and actresses there. Young and upcoming faces and familiar stars. Winnie didn't know them well, so she picked a corner to sit by herself. Except for the female lead, the male and female supporting role, the rest of the cast is still undecided, Bob said. There are many people here for the auditions. They're happy to even get the small roles in this film because director Woods is famous for showcasing every character's trait. Some of the younger stars are trying to use this as a stepping stone to go into acting properly. They're willing to do that? Winnie asked. When everyone is willing to lower their expectations, it no longer poses as a problem, Bob replied. Winnie was quiet. There were fewer competitors vying for the theme song of the film. There were only three of them. So they entered the lounge to wait their turn. She was the first to go in. She sat down to adjust her guitar. There was the sound of footsteps from outside. When she looked up, a red-haired woman about 30 years old walked in. She was wearing leather pants and had a cigarette in her hand. Patricia! When he stood up. This was her competitor, Patricia. She was a good singer who had an established career. I think you should leave while you can. Patricia was wearing 15-inch stilettos. She looked a lot taller than Winnie and didn't look friendly at all. Did Tara sleep with someone powerful to get you here today? You're so young and new. Do you have the right to compete with me and Maddie? Winnie frowned. Although Erin helped her a great deal in her career, she mostly owed her success to Tara. If you were to be compared to Maddie, you're still lacking as well, she said. Can I assume that your manager slept with someone powerful to get you here today as well? Winnie said. Patricia's expression changed. She said, You're really just like your manager, playing dirty tricks. We all know that Tara is supported by someone rich and powerful. How else could she afford to provide such resources to her artist? Winnie nodded her head and said, Your manager must have someone like that as well. Or maybe you do. You're almost the same age as Tara. 
You... Patricia raised her hand. Winnie lifted her cheeks. You can hit me, but you have to remember that this isn't your company. This is Director Woods' turf. He hates people who bully others with their authority and power. Of course, I hope you do hit me. Then you will be chased out of here and be eliminated as a competitor. Patricia, calm down, her assistant said as she tugged at her sleeves. We'll wait and see. Patricia angrily grunted. She walked to the front and sat down. Outside, there were two figures watching them. Sean took a puff of his cigarette and chuckled. Winnie is quite interesting, he said. Jeffrey smiled. He had never seen this aggressive side of Winnie before. She was always so easy to bully and easily flustered in front of him. He was worried that she might be bullied by Patricia and Maddie because of her lack of experience. It looked like he didn't have to worry about her. At 10 a.m., the audition started. Winnie went into the studio together with Maddie and Patricia. Near the French window was a long table. A group of people were sitting behind the table. Sean was sitting in the middle, and the producer and assistant directors were on the sides. Usually, the three singers would look on the name board on the table when they arrived. But today, their eyes were attracted by a young man beside Sean. That young man in a white shirt had deep, sunken eyes and a perfect nose. His delicate lips were pressed together into a beautiful arch. His hands were on the table, spinning a pen. Tall windows and blue sky were seen through the window behind him, making him look like an elegant noble man who came from an oil painting. Winnie's eyes widened in surprise. She couldn't believe the man who was in the elevator with her earlier was now sitting in front of her with Sean and so many other famous people in the film circle. Earlier, he mentioned that he was working on a new film. Was that Sean's film? Why didn't he say a word about it before? Jeffrey raised his eyes and gave Winnie a bland glance, as if he didn't know her at all. She was a little unhappy. However, as she gave it some thought, she realized that it was inappropriate for him to let the others know that he knew her. If he did that, the others might think she pulled strings to get the audition. Sean laughed. I, <laughs> I knew the people wouldn't look at me today, especially the little girls. It's because Jeffrey's sitting here. They'll stare at him. Totally, the producer smiled and replied. We middle-aged people are here to make him look even better. Jeffy raised his head and said, Shall we start? A lot of people are waiting out there. You're right. Sean nodded, then looked at Winnie and the other two singers. Afterward, he said to Maddie, Maddie, I'm sorry that I made you come here and compete with the others for this chance. I understand. You are always so serious about your films. Maddie smiled generously. Sean nodded and continued, I hope all of you understand that if I don't pick you, it's not because you were poor at singing, but because your voice doesn't match our theme song perfectly. You're all good singers. I was going to invite you one by one, but as there are only three of you, I asked you come in together. So this competition can be fair. You will be able to learn about each other's work. So now, please hand in the lyrics that you wrote. Winnie and the other two singers handed in copies of their work. When she handed her copy to Jeffrey, he took it without looking at her. The director and the producer had a short discussion. Afterward, Maddie said, I have composed music for the song. I hope that you can hear me sing it. Oh, Sean raised his eyebrows and said, Sure. Maddie sang a part of the unaccompanied song. Winnie was highly impressed. Maddie was an experienced singer. Her voice was deep and the melody was beautiful. As she finished, Winnie saw many people nod and praise her. Sean started the applause. Good! Your lyrics are composed of simple words. I'm surprised they sound beautiful when becoming a song. Ahem. <clears throat> Jeffrey nodded. They quickly glanced at Winnie. He said, Miss Winnie. I see that you brought your guitar. Are you going to perform for us as well? Being reminded by him, Winnie hurriedly nodded and said, 
Yes, I've composed music as well. John was surprised, while Patricia got anxious. She was the only one who didn't compose music. Director Woods, I wasn't required to compose music before. You only asked me to write the lyrics. Jeffrey coldly twitched his lips and said, Miss Patricia, do you often get bad grades in school? Patricia didn't get his meaning. I guess you were one of those students who only read the materials that the teacher told them to read. Jeffrey said, When you failed an exam, you'd only blame the teacher for not giving you enough reading materials. The others immediately understood his sarcastic metaphor. The other directors and producers couldn't help but titter. Patricia's cheeks turned red. The task I gave the three of you is the same, Sean said with a smile. The others made more effort than you did. I gave you an opportunity for fair competition, but the most hardworking ones always win. Patricia didn't dare argue. She was very upset and aware that she was going to lose. She would have nothing to say if she lost to Maddie, but she couldn't accept losing to Winnie. Miss Winnie, please start, Jeffrey said. Winnie glanced at him gratefully. Finally, she felt that knowing him was a good thing. Winnie's voice was completely different from Maddie's. When she crooned, her voice was deep, added with her guitar. Her singing had a sense of rhythm that Maddie's didn't. As she finished... The people applauded. Director Woods liked her singing. He said, I've heard your songs before. Your voice is clean and bright, so I was worried that my theme would not suit you. After hearing you sing, I now know that my worries were unnecessary. I like your lyrics, too. I'm surprised that you express the emotion so well. Maddie's work is good, too, the producer reminded Director Woods. You can't forget about her after listening to Miss Winnie's voice. I know. Director Woods rubbed his temples and said, How about this? Let's vote. The one who gets the most votes will be singing our theme song. That's a good idea. The others agreed. Six people made votes. Maddie and Winnie each got three votes. Patricia got zero. She felt so ashamed that her face turned scarlet. This is difficult. Director Wood said, when he was so nervous that her palms were sweating. I think we should choose Maddie, the producer said. She is a highly skilled and experienced singer. Her voice is familiar with most people over 30 years old. I think Winnie's skilled too, and she's popular, said the supervising producer. Jeffrey turned his pen. He finally joined the conversation and said with a cold voice, In fact, their voices can be impressive together. Director Wood's eyes glowed. Are you saying that? Winnie nodded and asked, Why can't they sing the song together? There's an age gap between them, but one of them has a touching strong voice. The other could sing with a floating gentle voice. Shouldn't that be interesting? Besides, isn't Winnie's voice perfect to be heard during the film? When the female lead is put into a miserable situation, she can sing the ending song too, sad and deep. I've heard her songs. Her love songs are great. Yes, you reminded me. Director Woods patted the table and excitedly said, Let's do that. Winnie and Maddie will sing the theme song together. I believe you two can create marvelous work together. As for the interlude song and the ending song, Winnie will work on them. The rest of the crew nodded in agreement. Maddie turned and reached a hand toward Winnie and said to her, Little girl, I hope we'll work happily together. Yeah, me too. Winnie was so excited that her face reddened. After hearing Maddie sing, she didn't care if Director Woods would pick her or not. After all, Maddie was excellent at singing. She sincerely admired her. The songs they wrote were about the same level. However, Maddie was much more experienced than her, so she was very likely to win. If Jeffrey didn't speak for her, she would certainly lose. In the end, she unexpectedly got both the theme song and the ending song. She couldn't believe it. You both created good lyrics and music, so I hope that you two can work well together, Sean said smilingly. Next, my assistant will help you sign the contract. 
I would like to have your support on all sorts of promotional events during the production of the film. No problem, Winnie nodded. She sneakily glanced at Jeffrey and found him looking at his phone, as if he had nothing to do with what was happening. She smiled faintly. She understood he was not as cold as he looked. He was just like his sister. Patricia walked out of the studio with Winnie and Maddie. Before leaving, she glared at Winnie. Bob covered her mouth and whispered, Why did she look at you like that? She lost you already. Shh. Winnie put a finger against her lips and said in a deep voice, She is arrogant but capable. Otherwise, Director Woods wouldn't have invited her here. She lost this time because she's too self-righteous. She felt lucky that she was comparatively more hardworking. After signing the contract, Winnie and Maddie exchanged phone numbers. As they prepared to leave, Winnie got a message from Jeffrey. Buy me dinner tonight. She smiled and snorted silently. He acted so coldly and pretended not to know her a few minutes ago. But now he was asking her to buy him dinner. He had done her a big favor. So of course she would buy him dinner. She replied with, Sure, what do you prefer for dinner? How about I cook for you at home? I don't want the reporters taking pictures of us. Jeffrey, we eat at home every day. I'm bored. How about we go for an outing and do a barbecue this weekend? You'll do the barbecue and I'll eat. Winnie didn't see that coming. She didn't know how to barbecue, but she assumed it wouldn't be hard. Going for the outing was a good idea. Ever since she started her career, she rarely went out. Winnie liked the idea. Okay, should we invite your sister and Mr. Bennett? The two of us alone might be boring. Jeffrey replied, No, my sister's pregnant. Aaron won't let her touch barbecue. Besides, he would sit beside us and talk about how barbecue will bring cancer to people. Winnie found him very right. Mr. Bennett only ate in A-grade places and would never let April come out alone. Currently, April was like a first-class national protected animal to Aaron. Soon, Jeffrey sent her another message. I won't be bored. With delicious food, I'll have fun, even if I'm with a doll. Winnie didn't know how to respond to that. Why don't you go with a doll then? She thought unhappily. So, she would only be there to make barbecue for him? It's a deal then, Jeffrey added. In front of the French window, Jeffrey was reading the messages. He was obviously in a good mood, as a big smile had emerged on his face. Sean glanced at him, then kicked him under the table, saying in a low voice, Who are you texting? Why are you smiling that way? Do you have a girlfriend? The corner of Jeffrey's mouth slightly twitched. Was he smiling just now? He didn't think so. Focus. Let's see their acting, he said to Sean. Damn, who's the not focusing one? Sean thought. More than 30 actors and actresses came for the audition. Some of them flew all the way there. Jeffrey tended to work with experienced artists since they were good at acting. The producer liked the popular ones more. Around noon, they had a simple lunch. They sat together and talked about one of the male supporting characters. During the meeting, Harry, the producer, received a phone call. After ending the call, he came back and said to the others, Here is an urgent message from the investor. Ben will be playing that supporting character. The others were surprised. Director Woods pulled a long face and said, We were about to give that role to Carter Hope. He's a popular and good actor. He's looking for a chance to expand his career, so he even lowered his price. That's right. The assistant director nodded. Earlier, I read the news saying that Ben acts like a diva. I hate it when artists are like that. This is not for me to decide. Harry was a little embarrassed and said, The investor strongly demanded we give him that role. We are talking about the biggest investor of this film. I couldn't say no to what they asked. Also, I have to remind you that we hired a famous company for post-production. If we don't do what they say this post-production team might leave. Director Woods' face was sour. Jeffrey frowned. Ben's name wasn't strange for him. Earlier, he made Morris switch the spokesperson of his new game. Ben was the only one who got replaced. What exactly is Ben's background? 
Jeffrey was expecting to see Ben again. Doesn't the internet say that he was born in an ordinary family, built his career single-handedly somewhere abroad, and then came back to America? Someone burst into laughter and said, Can we believe anything the internet says? Who can possibly become a superstar so easily without a solid background? Jeffrey gave a cold smile and said, I'm sorry I've seen him act like a diva with my own eyes. Director Woods glanced at him. The father of one of my friends owns the game company, which recently fired Ben as the spokesman of their new game. Jeffrey said, Even if he used to do that before, I mean, no one ever dared work with Director Woods with that kind of attitude, right? Harry hurriedly commented. We really don't have to openly offend the investor right now. Now, everything is ready. The more time we waste, the more money it will cost. Even if we switch our investor, the other investors would make the same request. Director Woods gave a long sigh and said, The atmosphere of the film industry is getting worse. That's why there's so many trashy movies nowadays. All right, let him play that role. We'll try to cut his part as much as possible. Jeffrey pressed his lips together. His unhappiness was evident. Ben will come here for the audition later, Harry said. We still have to go through the motions, but don't give him a hard time. At 1.30 p.m., Ben auditioned. He had slightly changed his appearance. His hair was short, exposing his eyebrows. His face was unshaven. He was wearing a denim jacket, which made him look like a ruffian. His new look was a little closer to the male role he was going to play in the film. Recognizing Jeffrey, who was sitting in front of him, his dark eyes wore a faint, awkward look. But soon, that look faded. He composedly nodded at Sean, then started his performance. Sean was delighted after watching his performance. It was not as bad as he thought it would be. Harry clapped and said, Ben, I never thought you were good at acting. Jeffrey lazily raised his eyes and said, Yeah, his acting skills are okay compared to those who know nothing about acting. Ben's expression froze on his handsome face. Awkwardly, he said in a low voice, I know that I still need to improve myself in many ways. Director Woods, please tell me anything that is on your mind about my performance. Sean rubbed the spot between his eyebrows, then nodded. Sitting beside Sean, Jeffrey took a sip of water, then continued. I have a question. Mr. Merck, aren't you a singer? You were doing good as a singer. Why did you suddenly decide to become an actor? To be honest, the door sale for acting is getting lower and lower. Currently, I'm seeing singers, hosts, and comedy performers do cross-border acting work. Ben wore an embarrassed look. He raised his head, looking at Jeffrey in the eyes. Harry frowned slightly and said, Jeffrey, mind your language. Cross-border work is normal. Many of our actors and actresses are working as singers. The problem is, I don't think he has great music work. Jeffrey turned the water bottle in his hands, maintaining his cold tone of speaking. Director Diaz, uh, I guess you're still mad at me because of what happened in the last time. Ben smiled and said, It was not my choice that the actresses you wanted got replaced. That was the company's business. All right, now is not the time to talk about personal issues. Sean interrupted him, then glanced at Jeffrey and said to him with a low voice, There's no reason to argue. Jeffrey undid the button below his collarbone, then stood up and said lazily, Since we've chosen the supporting actor, I guess I have no reason to stay here. You guys take your time to select the rest of them. After saying that, he turned and left. Harry was a little unhappy. In front of the others, he said to Sean, Why is Jeffrey so arrogant? His work is well-received internationally, but this is America. Who knows if his work will still do good here? Sean smiled at him, then explained, saying, You may not know, but he has every right to be arrogant. He is the major shareholder of Starlight Films. His mother is the heir of the Diaz family. His brother-in-law is Aaron, the owner of Splingo. Do I need to explain to you who Aaron is? Currently, his sister is pregnant. She is like the national treasure in the Bennett family. Would she ever let her little brother suffer any unfairness? Harry didn't know what to say. Ben frowned. He didn't know that Jeffrey was April's brother. 
No wonder. April was Winnie's good friend, and Winnie was selected to do the theme song. Did it have anything to do with Jeffrey? Winnie stayed at the company to work on the song with her team until 6 p.m. As she arrived downstairs at her apartment, she saw that Jeffrey's light was on. She went upstairs, hesitated briefly, then walked to his door and knocked on it. Before long, Jeffrey opened the door. He was wearing knee-length pajama pants with his upper body bare. His muscular chest was covered in water droplets. His hair was newly washed as well. While opening the door, he was drying his wet hair with a white towel. His fingers were clean and slender. Looking at him, Winnie felt that her heart was burning. She had seen his body that morning, but not so closely. She was in quite a hurry that morning. Now, his young and sexy body was right in front of her, making her cheeks turn red. Jeffrey noticed her red cheeks. He remembered her blush once before when he went to find her. Did she blush at the sight of him? He lowered his head and glanced at his own body. Corners of his mouth turned up. He ripped off the towel, exposing his shoulders. Are you here to thank me? He asked. I didn't know you were in the shower. Uh, I'll come back later. When he turned, intending to leave. It's okay. I'm done. Come in. Jeffrey held her arm. For the first time, he found her arm soft and tender. When he glanced at his hand, Jeffrey paused for a few seconds and quickly let go of her arm. He felt a bit awkward. Previously, every time a girl discovered where he lived and came to find him, he would want to drive them away with a broom. Seeing Winnie, he didn't want to do that at all. It was strange. You haven't dried your hair yet, Winnie said. I never dry my hair, Jeffrey said. Winnie walked in. She changed into slippers and looked around the living room, purposefully avoiding looking at his chest. Just put on something, she said. She awkwardly put her hair behind her ear, accidentally exposing her red ears. Jeffrey wanted to laugh. It was nothing but his bare chest, so why did it make her so shy? She was like an innocent little girl. He even wanted to capture her and bully her. As he picked up a white t-shirt from the couch and put it on, Winnie finally sighed with relief. Being close to a man who had a bare upper body at night made her feel uncomfortable, especially since she had slept with that man. Um, thank you for today, she said with a low voice. Why didn't you tell me your relationship with Director Woods before? Were you worried that I might ask for your help? You don't need to worry about that. I think you'd never do that kind of favor for anyone, not even your sister. How'd you know? Jeffrey took out a cup of yogurt from the freezer and handed it to her. The yogurt from that brand was delicious, so when he took it, she said... Because most people who are difficult to get along with are like that. Once her voice faded, Jeffrey's cold eyes landed on her. She immediately felt cold. Shivering, she added, Am... am I wrong? Give me that yogurt back, Jeffrey said as he reached out his hand. When he blinked, for some reason she pulled the yogurt close to her and said, No! Jeffrey looked at the yogurt, but ended up being distracted by her breast, which were upon the yogurt. She was wearing a thin, light brown cardigan that emphasized her full breast. His Adam's apple squirmed slightly as he hurriedly moved his eyes away. <sighs> I was joking, Winnie laughed. She didn't notice the look in Jeffrey's eyes. I know you helped me. I knew nothing about Director Woods. You gave me hints and spent time to work on my music with me. If it weren't for you, I might not even have a chance to compete with Maddie. Not to mention the fact that I won this opportunity. When do you have time? We'll go out for a barbecue. I'm not free at the weekend, but I have time Friday morning. What a coincidence. I'm free Friday morning too. He only had a technical demonstration class that morning, but he would try to escape it. I'm going to get us food. Jeffrey nodded. That's not okay. When he felt a little guilty about it. We've agreed that I'll buy the food. You can give me the money afterwards, said Jeffrey. Winnie didn't know how to respond. She was a little touched. It turned out that she was wrong. Noticing the change of her expression, Jeffrey thought for a moment and said, You don't have to give me the money. It won't be a lot anyway. No, that won't be all right. Didn't you say that except for your family and girlfriend, you won't spend money on anyone else? I understand, Winnie said. 
You said that just now. How can I not give you the money? She thought. Jeffrey frowned. She was right, but... At that time, Sean called him. Just get the call. I'm leaving. Winnie gave a hand gesture to let him know that she was taking off. Jeffrey nodded, then answered the call. If you're going to talk to me about Ben, forget it. I won't change my attitude. Winnie, who had just walked to the door, froze. She felt as if someone suddenly gripped her heart. She had broken up with him but could not forget him. Her heart ached every time she heard his name. She turned and watched Jeffrey talk on the phone. Sean said on the other side of the phone, Don't overthink. He will spend 10 days with the crew at most. He has a strong background and we were given no other choice. Don't let everyone know that you have issues with him. His friends are crazy and you're not famous in America. Don't bring trouble to yourself. Anyway, I won't direct his part. He's so lame, I would just scold him. Jeffrey finished talking, then ended the call. Afterward, he turned and found that Winnie was still near the door, looking at him as if she wanted to say something. Aren't you leaving? Jeffrey thought she had left. I... I just heard you mention Ben's name. Winnie was guessing but didn't want to believe it. He isn't taking part in the new film, is he? Um... Jeffrey responded. Winnie paused for a few seconds and said, I didn't hear about it before. I didn't see him during the audition either. If she knew that he would be there, she would give up on the opportunity. She didn't want to see him during work. She could not face him with composure. Even looking at him would be like tearing open old wounds in her heart. Jeffrey snorted and said, I wouldn't have agreed to work on this film if I knew that I'd have to work with him. Carter was supposed to be the supporting actor. For some reason, the investor replaced Carter with him. He's just a singer. I wonder about his background. Judging by what the producer said, I think the producer can't afford to offend him. Winnie felt bitter. What she heard from the TV station seemed to be true. She knew all about Ben's family background. His parents were ordinary workers and his entire family lived together in an old flat. How could he possibly become so powerful if he was not with a rich and powerful girl? What's wrong? The sensitive Jeffrey frowned as he noticed that Winnie suddenly became absent-minded. Do you know Ben? He asked. No! Winnie hurriedly shook her head. I just think he's pretty famous. After all, we're both singers. Can someone like that really be called a singer? Jeffrey snorted coldly. A singer needs to be like you, at least. Like me? What am I like? Winnie wasn't expecting him to say that. She thought, didn't he always say that my singing was merely average? Just average, Jeffrey said. He felt a little awkward. Aren't you leaving? I am leaving, Winnie said. She had a lot on her mind. She needed to go home and calm down. Back in her room, she browsed the contract. She wasn't an actress, but she still needed to participate in promotional events, including the opening ceremony that would take place in a month. After the filming was done, she needed to attend more than 10 advertising events that would be held all over the country. Clearly, she would see Ben at all those events. Knowing that, she felt numb all over. She called Tara and asked, What do you think will happen if I choose to quit Director Woods' new film? Tara was silent for a while. He suddenly yelled, Is your brain damaged? Are you asleep? Should I take you to the hospital to find out what's wrong with you? Winnie didn't say anything else. She had no one else to talk to but April. Only April knew her story. She called April and told her what happened. I know you don't want to face him, but you're in the same circle now, April said. You'll see each other sooner or later. It's even normal for you two to work together. Don't you see how many couples in the entertainment circle frequently run into each other at all kinds of events after they break up? Winnie, you can't give up your opportunities for a man like that. It's not worth it. Winnie smiled bitterly and said, April, I think I have a very poor taste in men. Me too, April said. It's all right. The people with good taste will discover us and fall for us sooner or later. The two soon ended their call. April turned and found Aaron leaning against the guardrail on the balcony, looking at her with a smile. Have you finally realized that I have good taste? 
he asked as he proudly raised his eyebrows. Have you been eavesdropping on our conversation? April frowned. She recalled her conversation with Winnie very carefully. She wasn't sure if she had mentioned Ben's name or not. Not eavesdropping. I was just listening to what you said. Aaron shrugged. Based on the information you provided, I figure that Winnie's ex-boyfriend is a star and that they're going to work together in the new film. Winnie is going to sing the theme song for that movie, her ex-boyfriend is a toy boy, and he betrayed Winnie. He's probably with another woman now. Poor Winnie. April didn't know what to say. No wonder you two are good friends. Aaron clicked his tongue and said, You were in the same miserable situation. Can you please keep this a secret? April asked. She looked for information about that new film on her phone. The press had been paying attention to the film. Surprisingly, she found that Jeffrey was part of the crew. She hurriedly called him and said, I just read that both you and Winnie are working with Director Woods on his new film. You must take good care of her. If any man troubles her, you need to kick him away. What does her business have anything to do with me? Jeffrey coldly asked. As your sister, I demand you to do so. For the first time, April used her sister privilege. Also, if you found that Winnie is getting unusually emotional, you should let me know. She's working so hard out there and she's always alone. Is she an orphan? Jeffrey suddenly realized that he had never seen Winnie's family come to her flat. No, April said. She had an issue with her family because of her ex-boyfriend. I get it, Jeffrey said. I bet her ex-boyfriend was from a poor family, so her parents didn't want them to be together. She chose him over her. April was speechless. Were her husband and brother both experts of logic? The guesses they made were all so right. How do you know? April buried her forehead in her palm. Many TV shows tell a similar story. Based on April's tone of speaking, Jeffrey figured that he was right. Somehow he felt a little uncomfortable. He knew Winnie had an ex-boyfriend, but he never thought that she had sacrificed so much for him. What kind of man made her so obsessed? April felt speechless. She almost forgot that her husband was good at acting and her brother was a director. Maybe you should talk to Winnie about it. It's her business after all, she said. All right, cliche. Jeffrey snorted coldly. Jeffrey threw his phone, still feeling uncomfortable. The next morning, he knocked on her door. When he answered the door, again with two huge dark circles under her eyes. Seeing him, she said, I'm sorry, I didn't make porridge. Plan to have breakfast at school later. Why didn't you make porridge? Jeffrey noticed how listless she was. She must have had poor sleep last night, and that was not because of work. Because I'm in a bad mood, she said. The weather's great. Why are you in a bad mood? Jeffrey asked. When he stayed silent, could the good weather guarantee a good mood? Through gritted teeth, she responded with, Sometimes women can be in a bad mood for no reason. I think you should have breakfast elsewhere for the next couple of days. She quickly closed the door. The slam of the door made Jeffrey take two steps backward. He was a little unhappy. He helped her yesterday, yet today she acted so unfriendly to him. It was awful. In the canteen, Jeffrey looked around but didn't see the familiar figure. He lowered his head to focus on the food, but after a few bites, he felt the food was tasteless. With nothing better to do, he started poking the chicken with his fork. If you don't want the chicken, I'll take it. Austin picked a chicken piece from his bowl. Jeffrey made no reaction. Instead, he held his fork with both hands and rested his pretty chin on them without noticing the girls in the canteen whispering to each other because of his movements. Austin sighed. A handsome boy could be charming with any movement he made. What do you think we should do when a woman's in a bad mood? Jeffrey asked abruptly. Austin coughed on some food. What are you doing? Jeffrey glared at him, then hurriedly wiped his face and clothes. (laughs) I'm sorry, I think I misheard you. Austin picked his ears with his finger, then asked, What did you say just now? I said, Jeffrey repeated his question through clenched teeth. What should we do when a woman's in a bad mood? Are you talking about your mother? Jeffrey stared at him then said word by word, 
I don't care if my mother's in a bad mood or not. Austin clicked his tongue and said, Who are you talking about then? You're not in love with a girl, are you? How can it be possible? Jeffrey glared at him. In love with Winnie? That was highly impossible. She was pretty and good at singing and cooking. She was adorable when her cheeks turned red. Her arms were soft and her breasts were full. Apart from that, what else did she have to impress people? What Jeffrey couldn't accept was the fact that she let herself be fooled by a man. Why is it impossible? You're a healthy man. That part of you is straight and healthy. Austin tittered. Speak human language, said Jeffrey coldly. Uh hum. Austin cleared his throat and continued saying, It's simple. When a woman's in a bad mood, you should hold her, comfort her. Jeffrey didn't know what to say. Hold Winnie? That wouldn't be all right, would it? He pictured holding Winnie in his arms. She blushed all the time. He believed that she would shyly bury her face in his chest. Her skin was so soft and tender, so holding her had to feel nice. Suddenly, he recalled what happened that night in the hotel room. His mind wasn't clear at that time, but he remembered feeling that the woman was beautiful. His bones even felt soft when it happened. He guessed holding Winnie would feel like that. Picturing Ella's face with that woman's body, Jeffrey was suddenly disgusted. It was as if he had just eaten a fly. After replacing that face with Winnie's, he started feeling nice. What are you thinking about? Why are you having this dirty smile on your face? Austin abruptly asked. Shut up, Jeffrey coldly said, slightly changing his expression. Austin eyed him with a weird look and said, Jeffrey, you've been acting strange lately. You smile for no reason. You suddenly started to care if a woman was in a good mood or not. I bet you've fallen in love with someone. If you're not, I'd chop my head off and let you sit on it. Me, fallen in love. Jeffrey smiled coldly. With whom? How am I supposed to know? Austin rolled his eyes and said, You only talk to Winnie in school, and you always leave once classes are over. I don't know who you hang out with after school. Jeffrey's heart leaped. Winnie seemed to be the only woman he had been having contact with. That didn't make sense. He didn't even know when he started to like her. He rubbed the spot between his eyebrows and asked, What do you mean by falling in love? Tell me about it. Austin sighed. Before knowing Jeffrey, he felt that the latter was a genius. After becoming friends with him, he learned that the genius had no clue about interpersonal relationships. First, you always want to see her, he said. Second, you always think about her. Third, you're upset when she's with another male. Fourth, you might suddenly find some part of her especially pretty. Fifth, sometimes you want to send her messages even if there's nothing to say and you like to run over her social media. Sixth, you care if she's happy or not. Seventh, you can't stand letting other people hurt her. Eighth, you imagine holding her and kissing her. Ninth, you buy her food. All right, stop. The more Jeffrey listened, the more shocked he was. For the first few things, he could explain it with the fact that he wanted to have Winnie's porridge, but he had no idea why all that Austin mentioned had already happened to him. He felt annoyed every time Marvin visited Winnie, and he checked her post on social media in the middle of the night. Just now, he imagined what holding her would feel like. Austin laughed and said, Based on those nine things, if you got two, you have feelings for her. If you've got four, you like her. Seven means you like her very much. And if you've got them all, you're beyond remedy. I'm gonna go get some milk and tea. You can have my chicken. Jeffrey said as he stood up, Boy, who on earth is the girl? Austin laughed. You are annoying me, Jeffrey said. He put his hands into his pockets and quickened his pace. When he was far away from the canteen, he found a stone bench to sit down on and called Morris. I think I'm in love with a woman, he worriedly said as he undid a few buttons on his shirt. Really? Morris was surprised. Isn't that good uh, it turns out that you like women not men jeffrey felt speechless he thought he's totally missing the point i'm in love with a woman that i didn't like before he said 
Are you talking about the one that you slept with? Morris asked. No, Jeffrey replied. How many women have been disliked by you? Morris was confused. Jeffrey suddenly felt that he shouldn't have turned to him. He might as well keep talking to Austin. I really don't like that one. Before, I didn't like this one either, but recently I somehow started to like her. Morris was a little confused. Should I congratulate you then? You finally like a girl. But she's three years older than me, Jeffrey said with a frown. She's like a little girl, though. Morris wanted to laugh. You think she's like a little girl because you like her. Anyway, this isn't easy. Since you like her, be nice to her. Um, I'll try to marry her as soon as possible, Jeffrey nodded. Morris nearly choked in his saliva. You just started to recently like her and you're already thinking about marrying her? Isn't that too fast? Besides, does she even like you? She'll like me sooner or later, Jeffrey responded with a bland tone. I like her and I'm serious about it. Morris didn't know what to say. All right, I am impressed, he thought. 